We are live, uncut and unfiltered, as always, joined by the wonderful Ian Poshkotch and Stevie, the Dram Pirate. How are we, sir? Ahoy hoy over there ahoy, in the ahoy, corner. Ahoy. I'm um, good, mate. Lovely to see you both. Today, we have got a wonderful episode. Uh, we are doing an introduction to Pete. So obviously, Pete is quite a quite an incredible topic, to be honest, and there's so many different aspects to it that we can start delving into. I think what we wanted for you guys at home is to kind of give a little bit of an introduction as to where you might want to start on your peat journey. Uh, often PT flavors and PT whiskies can be quite off-putting to a lot of people. Uh, and that's the last thing that we want. If you're new to whiskey, just started out getting involved, last thing we want is to put you off. So we've picked out five wonderful whiskies that we believe are a good point to start at within your peak journey. Uh, but before we get going, and as I pour, Ian, why don't you tell the people at home, what is peat? How is it used in whiskey? And why is it so exciting? So um, peat, I guess, in terms of how it's used in whiskey is used in part as part of the production in terms of malting your barley. So you have to dry the barley and heat it to start releasing some of the enzymes and whatever and you can do this with hot air uh you can do it actually i think as stevie and i found out with andrew with coal i didn't realize that was a thing that's how springbank actually with coke coal used to do yeah. it with coke yeah straight from the coal mine um or with peat and peat is effectively found in peat bogs it's a lovely store of carbon so it's not the most sustainable material in the world um and it's basically very heavily decomposed vegetable matter that's kind of almost fossilized i think if i was to say fossilized it's probably not quite scientific hundreds uh, if not thousands of years but, old yeah, it's very very old um and it burns nicely and it burns and the peat has effectively because it's in bogs it's very wet has soaked in the flavors of the earth and those flavors and aromas are released during the burning process and i think what's quite important with peat is where the peat is from isla is the region most closely associated with peat obviously it's very rugged it's very coastal very wet and their peat is associated with iodine medicinal flavors but that is not all about peat you can have highland peat and you get also get the peat that's used in highland park i don't know whether it's actually from orkney or a different area but that is associated with a much more gentle lighter heathery flavor um, the other thing, I guess, about the peat is how much peat is used and how long they're smoking the barley for. You get to the point with your Octomores and other very heavily peated whiskies where they're using a lot of it and your barley is smoked to what's called, you know, a PPM level parts per million inside the barley. And the higher you go, theoretically, the smokier you go. But as I said before, that smoke isn't necessarily then associated with a particular flavor if you were to use isla peat and smoke to port charlotte or an optimal level you'd have a very different flavor to the peat that's actually used because it's mainland peat in those expressions for sure i'm sure i have cocked up many things You're along forgiven. the way i will not be forgiven by the comments no and <laughs> drop in the comments what he's got wrong that's why i just graciously <laughs> handed it over to you funnily enough with 30 seconds of preparation yeah Thank you very much. <laughs> listen no i think it was a wonderful summation uh we're starting with the highland park 15 but this is the thing with pete the beautiful thing is there are all sorts of different styles not only where it's from but the cut of pete how deep it is is it dry is it wet uh as you have pointed out highland park peat and you get certain peat bogs that have kind of heather and these sorts of uh, one wonderful sort of vegetations on it uh whereas you know you get others like you say associated with iodine that is because the phenolic compounds within the peat are the exact same as found in certain uh, sort of hospital products. You know, I think it's C Cresol, right. uh, which is a phenolic compound mm -hmm. um, that is found both in peat and in TCP. Yep. Um, so, you know, so th this is the thing. It's it's interesting. Peat can often, as we said at the beginning, put people off. And that's the last thing that we want to do. Equally, Pete, I know that your mum is somebody I've spoken to. Two people now. Right. Yeah. And it, 
it transports them back to their childhood because of that TCP or the. You well, know. there's my mum that 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 does you know yeah the TCP which she loves you know, um, and equally uh, a good friend of mine Ashley it makes him reminds him of his oily garage where his motorbike stored and right you know, and he drank a little bit whiskey before but Jesus like gave him a pee and he was like. Fuck, I need more. Right. You know? This is it. Um, it so, can be, it can be a real time, turn off or it can be a real correct, turn on. Correct. I think you're absolutely right. What's wonderful about Pete is it transports you to places. Yeah. Sometimes it's, and it's most often, most readily associated with smoke, but smoke can be present when there is no peat used. Mm -hmm. And equally, it's not always smoke that's present when peat is used. Mm -hmm. Sometimes yeah. it's this rich, oily, rough, you know, phenols, you know, and these sulfuric compounds that are just taking over your glass and engulfing your mouth. So yep. with that said, that's a kind of a very brief <laughs> look at, at Pete and what uh, Pete is. I would like to say as well, it's all discovered really by accident, isn't it? Right. You know? For sure. People yep. were obviously using Pete to heat their homes, their fireplaces, and they were, I think, well, probably running out whatever they're running out the time to 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 dry the barley. So there's oh, Pete. You know, I think then, to be honest, yeah, fuck, it's, this it's, works. it's what's available. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And this yeah, is yeah. the thing when you talk about, it, you know, Isla is so readily associated with peat. It's because they don't have loads of trees there. They don't have loads of coal mines there. They don't have. They, so how were they drying their their barley? Well, they were peat. cutting peat because that's what was readily was all available. There, yeah. uh, and so this is the thing. I think kind of yeah, by accident, it has become such a what a beautiful accident, a that beautiful became, component, yeah. and, and and exactly such a beautiful accident <laughs> indeed. But um, it's an interesting component of whiskey, and it's really down to what is readily available in these different mm. regions. So particularly island whiskies and isla in particular you know peat is readily used but as we'll come on to as well there are mainland peats and, and mainland distilleries that use peat so let's start hard. off with the highland park 15 um you know what we tried to do here is pick five whiskies that are kind of at least core range maybe not readily accessible as we'll come on to quickly with the springer <laughs> um, but you know core range whiskies that show off peat in a beautiful way um aside from the fact that you had the highland park 15 open is there a reason that you picked it over the 12 Ian? i think with all of these like it's a it's, it's a journey into peat isn't it and the peat i think we're going to slightly amp up Mm. as we go on the highland park 15 is well a, it's a slightly higher abv and i think that shows off some of the flavors a little bit more 44 yes, percent but b the 15 has traditionally in flavor profile been that little bit actually lighter than the 12 and i think if you are um we talked about this in another episode peak curious and looking to you know take that first tiptoe into the water i think this is about as gentle peat as you can realistically find yeah in a single i completely bowl. agree i think my introduction to peat was the 12 um, and as you say, it was very gentle. You yeah. Know? And I think this is probably even more gentle than the 12. Right. Yes. Yeah. And that's yeah. the beautiful thing about Pete. And what you'll notice now is a lot of distilleries putting out younger age expressions when they're using PT whiskies because the peat is more present. Uh, obviously, aging in oak casks strips all of those sulfur compounds out. And peat is one of those kind of off notes, whether you like it or not. Um, that is stripped out. So younger whiskies do show off that peat in a much more sort of bulky, talk, rich like, way. That's the, you know. Is one of the main things that I'm thinking of as I'm saying that. You're absolutely bang on, Stevie. So I, I couldn't agree more. I'm delighted you've said that, uh, Ian. You know, obviously having the bottle open is is great. Uh, the 12 is a, is a great place to start, don't get me wrong. But I think the 15 is a little bit richer, a little bit full of bodied yeah but the peat is that much lighter that you can really appreciate it as a drown and get going uh, and when we talk about different styles of peat what i love about highland park is that kind of heathery uh you know slightly more um almost perfumed peat perhaps yep. you know um it's 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 very approachable very light very easy it, it has none of those kind of isle of flavors you would expect the slightly heathery notes i think complement the kind of honeyed early mouthfeel that you get with a lot of highland park as well and then the peat is there just as a you know a tiny little bit of earthiness and maybe just a, the faintest waft of smoke on the finish definitely well i'll tell you what look let's get the spring bank 10 in the glass and dual wield with this compare and contrast <laughs> because what i like about both of these two whiskeys that we're starting with is that in honesty, I don't see smoke as being a core part of the dram. There are wisps of smoke in both, but I wouldn't say that they are 
overly indulgent in smoke. I wouldn't say that smoke takes over your glass entirely. Um, and that's what I kind of like about these as kind of an entry point into P is people do associate it with those Isla flavors, which are often very rich and off-putting to some people, or with just heaps and heaps of smoke. Um, and what I love about the Springbank 10, um, you know, it's obviously here, Highland Park 15, you've got those heavy notes, those perfume notes. It's quite light. It's very um, elegant. And then kind of contrasting that, but along similar lines in the lack of, you know, heavy smoke is... Industrial. It's, it's, <laughs> yeah, it's rich, it's industrial, yeah. it's oily, yeah. you know. There's still smoke in there, but it's not bang, wafts of smoke and you're in a, you know, a big firehouse or anything, you know. It's, it's well... There's more of a garage. Let me get it in my, yeah. in my uh, so the, the it, te Yeah, the 10 has a lovely garage note mm. to it. It's, um, it's not as dirty as some spring backs can be. In fact, I, I, I think the 10 is generally quite light and fruity and it is a very, very good place to start. And you probably, I mean, sometimes even the higher age statements can be quite batch inconsistent. Some of them, the peak level is, is very low. Other than others can, you know, some releases be very industrial, more so even than than this. Whereas the 10 is a pretty consistent product. Yeah. Right. And Sorry, trying to remember back now to our visit to Springbank. They use a mixture of both Coke and peat. There's no Coke anymore in Springbank. It hasn't been since the coal mine shut. Okay, so it's dry peat and wet peat then. No, it's, it's... Sorry, I'm misremembering entirely. It's Apologies hot that. air, like most people. Oh, okay, sorry. Right, so it is as opposed to Coke. Yeah. Sorry, so it's hot air and peat. Yeah. Right, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, and this is the thing. So I think the mix of the two really allows for the Springbank malt style to kind of show off itself. You know, whereas you look at Long Row or Kilkerran, which are just that much more bolshy. And to me, this is a perfect entry into Campbelltown. Go on. The standard Kilkerran mix is the same as Springbank. Is it? Yeah. Kilkerran to me is so much more bolshy in its, in its peat. Yeah. It's, yeah, heavily peated Kilcarran is basically they take the same long grow malt and stick that in, and the standard Kilcarran is Springbank malt. That's really interesting. That was what Andrew told us, right? That's what you said, Andrew. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, in fairness, I cannot remember that trip was an absolute well, no, that whirlwind. Was, that journey. was what Andrew was telling us a couple at, of weeks ago. The tasting. Yeah, yeah the tasting. Right. So okay, we, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I wasn't there, so there we go. I'd yeah, be forgiven for missing it. Um, no, but listen, I, I think both of these are really great entry level points for different reasons. You know, if you are looking for something that little bit more elegant and soft and gentle. If you are looking for something like the 10, you won't find it. <laughs> for sure. Unfortunately. And that's it. So with the Springbank 10, unfortunately, it's difficult. You, you, and I, you I actually, will find I it. blame Guy Dutton for that because he's hoarding oh, all the Oh, Guy's got Spring all of it, yeah. Has he? Yeah. I'll like, show you a picture yeah. in a minute. Um, and he's got all of them. I think he's got a direct, like, some lorry that delivers every week. I love it. You know, the, Shout out, Guy. Well, actually, a little while ago, about six months ago, Dropping you in there, Guy. About six months ago, there was a lorry load of Springbank that went missing. Oh, yeah. Just yeah. the Springbank got nicked from Yeah. Yeah. It was Guy. It was, it was Guy, like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, I love it. No, look, it's not easy to get your hands on, but this is the thing. Look, I think Springbank, people complain about Springbank's availability. Springbank is not your kind of readily accessible thing. If you can get your hands on it, it is quite a special bottle to open, even their core range. And I love that about it. The fact that the 10-year-old isn't just something that you can walk into your local off-license and grab. Not anymore, no. Makes it something really special. What, what, I think is, what I think is good, right, is auction prices, particularly for the 10, have softened significantly. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm hoping it'll be more available because it's got to the point now where especially as some selling fees on the auction sites have gone up recently... There's no way flippers are going to make any money on it. For sure. Um, and if you are a buyer, the kind of prices that are being achieved are basically retail plus, plus fees. fees, right? It's a lot so of energy just for a few quid. Well, yeah. I mean, literally... Do you know what I mean? A lot of effort. You, yeah. would, be, you would be losing money as a seller on one like, of these nowadays. Even, you're even Good. really scraping yeah. around Fuck <laughs> for a few quid. No one should be making money on a bottle of Springbank 10. <laughs> yeah, no, it, exactly that. Listen... I appreciate that there is an investable market when it comes to bottles, but with the likes of Springbank 10, 15, even the 18-year-old, fuck yourself, all right? Honestly, I'm not having it. I'm not having it. The fact that you're losing money, good. 
you've been told, all right? If you're hoarding it and you're buying it, you're enjoying it, fine, okay? If you're, that's fair play. I mean, it's a little bit tough to take as a spring bank lover. You know, we had to dig this out. This is literally the dregs of a, cat, of a, of a bottle now and, and it's all gone. But again, and something that we talked about recently enough is when you've got a bottle of whiskey that's open for a while, sometimes you come back to it and it's a bit flat. This has been sat there for a minute now and it was literally... I mean, we've just about got three drams out. I think it's been, you've had that open for like four or five years. I'm not even joking. But it tastes, it tastes yeah, yeah, great. I know. It's spring bank 10, through and through. That's it's not yet. Yeah, obviously. Do you know, you could give that to me blind. It's spring bank 10. And that's what's so great about spring bank. And again, is it the, where, where's this bottle there? I'm sorry. 46. It is 46. Yeah, of course. I was going to say, yeah. So for, is it that it's just at that sli slightly higher percentage that, you know, so many distilleries bottle at a flat 40 for profit? Who knows? Is it because there's that element of peat in there that's adding structure to the whiskey so that when it's open for a while, it remains sort of the same? Who knows? But I can say with complete honesty, coming back to this so many years on, like you say, it probably is quite a few years on. I don't, I didn't even know we had that to be honest. Long time then. It's a Spring Bank 10 and that's what's so great about it. So even though you do have to track it down once you've got a bottle, you can open it and you can leave it there in your cupboard, come back to it over the months and years to come, and it will be unchanged, which I think is definitely something very uh, strong to be said for Springbank. It's um, definitely uh, just, it's a very, well, they all are silly, quite maybe, but it's a very unique peat flavor in Springbank. Yeah. Well, As to me, it's, um, I just think you highlighted it perfectly at the beginning. It's MOT garages. And it's the thing I always say about Springbank 10 in particular is it's oily. It's just that mouthfeel, that coating. It sticks around. There are wisps of smoke. There is there is lots of stuff. Like you say, it's kind of fruity. There's lots of stuff going on. Yeah. But oiliness is the thing that sticks with me and that draws me to it so much. And that style of Pete, I think, really suits it. I think well. there's the odd Glen Scotia that can be, you know, people talk about Campbelltown funk, not Springbank funk. And again, they obviously have unpeated stuff, heavily peat stuff. And I think their medium peat level can be it, it sounds very dismissive to say springbank-esque but i think i mean that in terms of flavor profile as opposed to an imitation of right mm -hmm. for sure for sure um because it's absolutely its own thing and you you could mistake it from time to time i'm going back to this hyla park i'm loving it oh yeah it's yeah nice. both of them they're just such great starting points i think it's hard well, to gonna be, be offended by either but they're both very different yeah very, very different styles. Well, you're going to be very excited now because... Uh... So, yeah, this Talisker, we, we were chatting around between us beforehand. Sure. I just bought this. It's the Talisker Sky. I think we were all talking about the Talisker 10, uh, which is now how much, Stevie? I saw it in Tesco's for like 54 quid what? or something. You're fucking kidding me. No, no, no it's gone up, dude. I mean, seriously, it was... Unless until... it was on the wrong, like... Place, but uh, until sure. oh God, like I don't think I'm the mo I think the most I've ever paid for a Talisker ten was about thirty quid. So do you know this is priced at forty eight pounds in Tesco. You're fucking kidding me! I got it on club card price down to twenty eight pounds. That's more like it. Still a little bit. I was thinking more twenty five pounds, but you know, that's, so what, that's what it used to always be. You know, any, on the outlets is anywhere between forty three and fifty three quid. So yeah, it's it's around that. What the ten? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, but anyway, look, to you be have honest, to make postage you, on that entry level well. points. Again, you know, we are price conscious here. Obviously, I myself in particular can be a little bit more frivolous when it comes to spending. Uh, but Stevie always keeps me in check and makes me, you know, look, especially for this episode, this is an entry level into Pete. I know that a lot of our audience are seasoned drinkers like ourselves and get involved and, and maybe spend more money than is, you know, is is your average on bottles of whiskey. But we want to make sure that this is accessible, that this is a good entry level point. And I think spending 50 plus pounds on an entry level bottle would put a lot of people off. So yeah. in Tesco's, you can pick this up for 28 pounds, provided you've got a club card. I signed up for my club card at the till, so don't worry. If you don't have one, it's not difficult to fucking get one. Did you? Yeah, hi. Um, and this is Talisker Sky, which I'll be honest with you, is something I haven't had for a long time, and I would always slate a little bit. Well, You know, you've got the sky and the storm, and I would always say, skip them and go to the 10, because it's not that much more. No, exactly, 100%. But now it is that much more, so it makes sense to go back to the sky and let's see where we're at. Let's see what's in our glass today. You know, it's I like the rebrand. Uh, it's still the classic forty five point eight percent, which is you know good for supermarket whiskey. Yep. Um, it's been to the tanning shop. Fucking just a bit. Just a bit. Just a bit. <laughs> where does it end? 
Uh, uh, Liverpool. Because it's just. <laughs> I said, oh, man, head over to Ireland, some of the Irish. <laughs> God, you can tell how young a girl is in Ireland based on how much fake tan she is, honestly. Like, it, they gradually, they age out of it, thank God. But Christ, some of the young girls, I don't know what they're doing. It's sad. But yeah, no, it's definitely been to the tanning beds. And uh, nah. listen, 28 Shame, pounds. You know, I would prefer it if it was fucking crystal clear. Rip back. You know, it as it is. Listen, who gives hey. a shite, right? But who are we to say? Uh, the Yash Show is a big global conglomerate earning multi millions, if not billions, of pounds. So I'm sure they're doing something right. right? Tanner School was kind of my route into, back, like back into Pete. I started with Highland Park, but kind of didn't <laughs> almost really appreciate the Pete. That the, the Pete was such a yeah yeah no. And definitely. then Tanner School was the route back in. I kind of bought the ten, then I bought the Distillers Edition, uh, then the eighteen, and now I've got like twenty bottles of Tanner at home. Um, and it's I think a winner. I think the fact it's the it's the Highland Pete, but at a reasonable ppm, plus the kind of naturally spicy chili kind of spirit that comes off the Task Castils works really well. And it's got that to me. It's it's a very earthy Pete. Mm. You know, we're we're gone from the heather to the oily, and now we're going to the earthy. It's you know, it just shows you how sort of versatile. Pete is, you know, and it really does matter where the cut comes from, so to speak, you know. Yep. Um, but I think it's like you said, it's it's earthy, but there is some smokiness to it. But it's it's still clean, right? There's no, yes. there's no medicinal. No, 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 no medicinal. No, no, absolutely. I'm actually, I'm not, I'm not hating this. I just feel like there's there's stuff left on the table. They get, you know, yep. it's, it's just thin. But remember this episode, intro into Pete. If I, if you hadn't had some, I would PT be before, quite impressed. This is what I'm trying to think, and I'd be like, Jesus, there's so much going on, and blah blah blah. And what it does have is, it does have, as you said there just a moment ago, Ian, that classic kind of chili pepper vibe remains within yep. the sky, which I'm glad to see. It doesn't have that coastal salinity that I find in older drams. It doesn't have that depth, and I feel that. The waft of smoke, and I'm sure we 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 did our Talisker episode, and I think I said something about the smoke being woven in mm. by angels. And I do always feel that about Talisker. The smoke is so delicately positioned, but such an integral part of the dram. It's like the backbone of the dram that's not focal, but integral all the same. And I just feel like that's been washed away. Yeah. It's a shame that this isn't the storm because I would make a joke about the storm washing it away or something. Oh. It's the sky. But, you know, <laughs> sorry. Um, <laughs> but that's how I feel, you know. I just feel like something has been washed away here. You still get that spiciness, that chili pepper vibe. You still get some peat going through it. But I think that the salinity and the beautiful smoke that is such a, like you say, for me, Talisco is one, again, I can't, can't think it was probably one of the first three or four whiskeys that i tried that made me truly fall in love with people yeah and that element of love i'm missing here. the the other thing that i love about talisker that if you've got the budget to do it and i'm not even talking about a colossal budget although with today's talisker prices it is definitely a budget is that it's a wonderfully consistent spirit that also works well in a variety of different casks right and i think the fact that it's also consistently bottled at 45.8 percent across the range is also really helpful when it comes to doing verticals across it right right yeah no problem. so you can look at the port rue which is finished in port casks and you get some more red fruits you have the distillers edition which is finished in amoroso or cream sherry casks and it's similar but with a sweeter more sherry darker fruit vibe yeah. 10 is obviously a step up from this in terms of quality as well. The 18, a further step up again. By the time you get to the 25, you're starting to get much more fruitiness in there and the peat is starting to dial itself down a little bit, but it's still very clearly off of the same stills. By the time you get to the 30, it does really start to transform itself more. But again, I think if you're lucky enough to have some of the older special editions, you know, I think we had that 
one at Christmas, the 1985 mm. edition. You know, that's still really coastal and maritime and very clearly a Talisker as well. It's it, it's, it's a wonderful spirit. It's right? an incredible spirit. And I think, again, you know, turning up the ABV, we had things like the 57 degrees north on the, on yes. the podcast before. And, and that's where you really get into a whole other realm as well. But you're right. I think having that sort of consistency to do verticals and to compare and contrast and figure out what it is you like or don't like about certain expressions is great. Um, and to be honest, look, I, I think I have slated the sky in the past and the storm, you know. I'm not hating on it as much today. And I think you're right. The episode is an entry into Pete, you know, a start on your Pete journey. And, and with that in mind, I think that there are lots of people out there that probably would enjoy this as a decent start point, you know. Again, we've had the, the elegant and, and perfumed mm. Highland Park. We've had the kind of quite rich and coating oily spring bank and now we've had this talisker which is something different in its own right again absolutely you know absolutely. Uh, i think what's wonderful about what we've got here is it's quite a different array of different drams and moving on to the the kalila 12 we've got something different again you know which i have to say price wise is tough to take nowadays. Hard guys. pill to swallow that. Woo. How much did you pay for that? It was over £70. Jesus. What the? No, you are kidding me. And that was off Let a me double check. Let me double check. Uh, website as well. Let me double check. I remember the days when you could pick this up from anywhere for less than 40 quid. Fuck in my day. But that's back in my day, less than like... No, I know. And even, to be fair, mate, and I've only been probably five years now into whiskey, I remember it being cheap Hold as on. chips. No. You made a mistake. It was the mock that's that much, maybe. Okay. Sorry. Ooh. It's £52 down to £49. It's... Yeah, it's 50, pit, 50 quid. Apologise. I feel yeah. sorry. So sorry. To Ooh, sorry. Sorry. Sorry, Kalila. Oh, sorry I got it wrong. Oh. Um, it's 50 quid. Okay. Apologies. Sorry. All right. I was but the mock, say... okay, sorry. The mock then must be the one that I was looking at. And you know why I say it is then? That a... The mock is always the one that I used to go to as like a... Is it a non-age statement? The mock is non-age, yeah. Yeah. But you prefer it over the 12? 62 pounds. Um, we're going to ask you guys, have you ever cut Pete before? Have you ever been out to a bog and no. shoved in a... I really, uh, no. Uh, have you seen the, the special spades that they use? Yeah, that? the yeah. long fucking... fucking cool, yeah. yeah. Um, no, I really want to. Yeah. Uh, if someone's watching that has access to a Pete bog... Invite us along. I mean, genuinely, I used to fucking holiday in the back of... The, the swamp. Genuinely. <laughs> we used to... The back arse of Ireland. <laughs> Next to boggers, and that's what we would call them boggers because they lived on peat bogs. Oh, really? I yeah, no, exactly. And <laughs> and so I grew up around it, but I've never cut it, my guy. I'm a I'm a tinker at heart, but I've never fucking cut the stuff on board. <laughs> I'd love to. We love all that, and and in fact, little things like that. Yeah, if anyone's listening, got peat bog, we'll come along. We're, we're going to go prune some fucking apple trees on oh, I can't Aaron wait for that. Weeks. Pruning apple trees on Aaron. You can't come for that one. That's no, right. Yeah, You're sorry. joining us the week after. We've got a very special trip over at the Whiskey Baron plan. Can't tell you too much, but it might be with a certain special someone from Glen Allocky. Stay tuned. Um, right. Finally. No, not finally. Here, we, here we go yeah. into more of the bonfire kind of peat, don't yeah. we? You know? Well, now we're on Isla. Yeah. And again, yeah. talking about Pete transporting you, Kalila Pete transports me to the beaches in front of Kalila. It really does. Bonfire-esque, definitely. Yep. Uh, Barbecue-esque, we talked about that kind of lemony note and um, and, and, and almost like um, bonfired fish, like, uh, sorry, barbecued fish, kippers and, mm -hmm. and that sort of thing. That's what Kalila does for me. It really transports me there. I haven't had the uh, the 12 in a while. The mock does normally stand above it for me, to be honest. And that's why I would normally have gone to the mock before the 12. Now they're both quite a bit more expensive, to be honest. I remember, yeah, when you could get this for 30, yeah. 30 40 quid. At most. And there are some people out there that literally have this on their cereal, right? Or well, at least the, with their breakfast. The mock was, is the breakfast whiskey. The breakfast dram, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah, Love yeah, that. yeah, 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 yeah. Morning, mock is morning. Was that the first distillery we visited when we got over to Isla, or was it Bunner? I can't remember. Because they're quite close up by, aren't they? Or at least, are they different ends? 
They're relatively geographically close, yeah. Yeah, sorry, yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah you kind of get to Kalila by Port Skeg and then you kind of turn off down the single track road and just drive down it for yeah. about three miles Did past Arnhem. I think Kalila might have been our first stop. Um, and, and my point being is it, if it was, it would, was my first ever distillery tour. Oh, genuine? Um, yeah. Oh, that's yeah. exciting, dude. Yeah, absolutely. It was a great distillery tour. I can't remember the name of the woman who brought us around. She was uh, lovely, though. I remember her, yeah, yeah. And I told her that we had a cask of a couple of casks of Kalila, and she was like, what? It's <laughs> incredible. I was like, yeah. <laughs> oh, I'm excited about it myself. It is incredible, you know? I look back on that trip, and I kicked myself, because it was 2019, I think, May 2019 or something. Aye. And we visited all the city shops, and I was kind of... Clean. I loaded up, mate. Oh, you did? I was like, what's he doing? I mean, spending a lot of money idiot. here is Jake. <laughs> What's this fucking idiot doing? Nowadays, I'd fill <laughs> suitcases. <laughs> literally. <laughs> oh, funny, man. Too funny. But no, this, um, yeah. that, that Kalina is a great distillery tour, actually. If that was your first distillery tour, it's a fantastic <laughs> one. Because it's quite industrial, but because it's on Isla and it's run by the Isla bunch mm -hmm. who are so puzzled. And if you haven't gone to Isla, go to Isla. It's incredible. Everyone is so personal. You've got the Isla wave, which was a wonderful touch for us. It's my first time on Isla, same as you, right? Um, I've obviously done a good few distillery tours before that, but it was an incredible experience. And, uh, and yeah, I felt that there was a good mix between it being an industrial facility, but with a personal touch. And I think that's the Isla vibe. For sure, yeah. That had, you know what I mean? Well, a lot of those distilleries have been, well, uh, Khalid especially was not completely knocked down, wasn't it, in the 70s, I, I believe, and completely rebuilt, um, including the stills, mm. uh, believe it or not. Um, was it in the 70s? Yeah. Uh, for sure. Tell me if Whatever, wrong, anyway. Please. Yeah, yeah. Drop but, in the comments, make sure we get it right. Um, <laughs> but yeah, yeah no, fair enough. Because I remember we went through that and it was a very new building. And as you say, that kind of industrial, clean. But then we went, I think the tasting then was outside in one of the kind of long old sheds, if you like. You yes. remember? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, um, yeah. But you're right on the seafront as well. Waves crashing. It's a fucking awesome place. Um, it's an incredible one. Yeah, for sure. And they let you try the. Um, Festival drone? No, they let you try stuff as you go. Do you know what I mean? They let you try the cleric on the tour. They yes. let you dip your fucking. Uh, they, they had a like a, a glass on a rope oh, that you yeah. let, let you dip in, you yeah. know, into the washbacks and all yeah, of that. Yeah. They let you try everything as you go. Had you tasting, and then we had. In fact, she got something out in the in the the shop as well. I can't remember what it was. It was something special. It was she really treated us very well. Actually. I mean, I'm sure they take care of everybody in such a wonderful way. But that's the beautiful thing about it is they make you feel a bit special. Yeah. You know, uh, they have let you, you try everything. Have you been over to Isla? I have. I was there at Fage in 2019. Did you go to Kalila? I, I still did. haven't yeah. even cool. been to Fage and I really want to go to Fage and to the Campbelltown Malt Festival. It's actually something I was talking about to Andrew the other day. But um, um yeah, face is great. Uh, it's very busy, obviously. Um, I don't mind busy. I just would want to be able to, same as Camelotown Malts Festival, I would want to be able to go along and do a good it, number of the tours and the tastings. Yeah, it's great. It's a great time, right? And we should we should absolutely go and film it sometime. Mm. We will. Um, you need to book it in advance. If you are interested, don't sit in um and ah about it. That's it. Accommodation starts going pretty much as soon as the last festival's finished, right? Some people will book again for the next year as yep. soon as it's over. So yep. get on it. That is my only I mean, the accommodation advice. is fairly limited anyway, at the best yeah, of times, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let yeah. alone when, yeah, there are thousands of whiskey. I Isla's probably easier than Campbelltown. There are more hotels and stuff, mm. but it's limited in terms of volume. Right. Right. There's not a lot out there. No, no, for sure, um, for sure. What do we think about this Kalila 12, though? Sorry, we're, we're, di we're digressing. In fact, sorry, uh, no, continue digressing. When we were there, we had a little Airbnb from some lovely, a lovely yeah. couple, can't remember the names. Um, and it was, I can't remember time of year, May, so it was a little, still a little bit chilly there. Um, and we had Pete to uh, light our, our, our log fire there. To warm you know? our, our bones oh, in the evening, burner. absolutely. And it was yeah, delicious yeah. smelling that, you know, wafting through the house. Sorry, just put that in there. Kalila 12. It's pretty nice, right? It's pretty tasty. I have to say, I still think the mock out does it for me. And I don't know what it is. I would need to do a side, but we need to do a Kalina <laughs> episode. We will get on it. It's been something that a lot of you have been asking for. We'll make sure we get on it shortly. You know, I think this is a lovely introduction to traditional 
Isla mm. Pete. But yeah, right? I think that's exactly it. And that's why it's on the lineup today. It is a fantastic introduction to Isla Pete. Did we crack the bottle today? Did we? Yes, we did. Yeah. Good. Well, there we go. We we got it for a good reason then and good, a good you episode. Know, compared to Lager, compared to Port Charlotte, compared to Ardberg, it's, it's definitely gentler, but it's still got that coastal kind of iodine hit to it just at a level a right? manageable level yeah. particularly for a newbie who doesn't like that sort of a thing it's uh warms you up it gets you yeah gets you going yeah no i agree i think it's a great dram it's a fantastic distillery it's a real favorite of mine i have to say we're very excited i think later this year we're going to be bottling some stuff uh so we've got kalila wise under the whiskey baron shamefully i don't have much or i think any kalila in my collection at the moment or open it's one of those ones again as we said, peat dissipates over time. I love the way the Kalila peat dissipates. And when you get into the 25, 30, 35 year old expressions. I had the 30 wow. a little while ago. Oh my God. It's, it's oh. sensational. Oh. Right? It is sen Are we talking sensational. Some glass away for the long, long haul. You know what? Now, because they're not as readily accessible, we might need to. Yeah. But we're definitely going to be bottling at least one lace this yeah, year. Yeah, so yeah, stay sure. tuned oh. on the whiskey brown side of things. That's a scoop there, mate. That's a scoop and a half now, babe. <laughs> Sorry. Get your cones right. out. Um, right, cool. So where are we at? Ardmore. The fifth and final of our entry into Pete. And I think everyone at home knows that I love this distillate. Ardmore, a distillery that if you go on their website and their Instagram page will have you think they bottle nothing else other than this single expression. <laughs> yeah, for sure, right? Ah, <laughs> uh, listen, it's... Uh, I understand it. And the fact that it's so readily accessible in the shops is great. You know, we picked this up from Morrison's. How much was it, Stevie? Oh, shit. Um, I think it was on a sale and I believe... I believe I picked up for about 21... 20 quid... It's pretty good. It's forty percent uh, RRP. That was like a sale in yeah, Morrison's, no, for but, sure, but still, for sure. it's normally on sale, right? 20, so, 20, uh, 25 quidish. Yeah, of. yeah. A, oh, they use the word unique a lot, uh, and it is unique because you can't fucking buy any of their other shit. Um, <laughs> interestingly, you bought this recently, right? Today, today, it's got a twenty eighteen bottling date on it. <laughs> what? That is interesting. I mean, unless 2018 means something different other than the year it was bottled. I'd be surprised. What's the context exactly. on the label? Is it on its own? No, no, just the, the like, you know, you normally have a laser etched bottling code. Oh, right, right, right. That's when the distillery was founded, mate. <laughs> Again, another one I don't have often. I think IB Ardmore is is great, and you know Guy was chatting to us about that. Gordon this is about. the legacy, isn't it? Yeah, it's not it's non age statement. No, non age statement. Forty percent. Yeah, supermarket. For sure. Um, I did uh, a while ago during COVID a lineup of thirty year old whiskies, and it had the Bunner thirty, the um, Glen Glassow thirty. It had an older um, Ballantines thirty. It had an older Campbelltown Lock thirty, the Ardmore thirty, and the Talisker thirty. So it's a f just a half decent lineup. Heavy hitting lineup. Was the Ardmore an OB? Was it was it? an OB. Right. Yeah, the Ardmore thirty OB came a very close second to the Talisker. Wow, that's saying a lot. That is saying a lot. Fair play. I love Ardmore, and I think we've discussed this before, so I don't want to bore people, but I always say Ardmore is a nice amount of filth, a nice amount of dirt in your mouth. It's soil. It's earthy. It's 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 clearly a Highland peated whiskey, and that's what I love. Yep. Again, it's place, right? It brings you to the location. Um, I, I think it's a great whiskey and, and as a non-age statement dram to be honest this isn't one that i would frequent you know i i can't even think of the last time i tried this to be honest with you um we've got a lot of ardmore casks under management and i love the stuff and a lot of ib ardmore is just phenomenal and that's the thing guys listen obviously we're showcasing you five brands here you can sometimes find some of these brands in independent bottling formats and sometimes that's the way to go if you you know figure out this is what you like you can often find particularly with Ardmore I would say some really great renditions of the spirit in 
different styles, different formats at good prices that you might not be able to find elsewhere. Um, but I actually, for a non-age statement whiskey, I think this is really quite delicious. For 20 quid. 20 quid. 20 quid cannot go wrong. <laughs> that, that's mean? the best thing we bought for 20 quid. Like, Probably, yeah, ever. You you compare it against those I'm pretty sure whiskeys and other stuff. There's no real off notes to it. There's not a huge amount on the initial part of the palate, but like I said, you get the dirt. Yeah afterwards i don't think this one is overly complex it's kind of to me it does what it's supposed to do though it's an ardmore it does what it says in the tin it is that earthy dirty kind of pt malt yeah and i think that that's all you want from an ardmore and again this is the entry into pete so i think we've leveled this up beautifully starting out with that elegant highland park 15 and moving on to this kind of quite rich and dirty ardmore depending on where you guys are at and what you're looking for within your peat these are all different things that might be sort of suitable what are you looking at there Steve? i've got a receipt here oh how much is it yeah we've got cadbury 12 bites one pound 65 mm -hmm. which Bargain is very nice. important Bargain. that's ian's rider that's yeah. what Bargain. gets him out here every time we actually got him two packets <laughs> Can the other one was twenty-one pounds. Come on, guys! Twenty-one pounds. That is great. Phenomenal stuff. Look, I, yeah, you cannot argue it. I don't think there's much to Shower say about it other than it's really quite tasty and it's a lot of earthy, dirty peat. Not a huge amount else, personally. Um, but again, this is owned by Beam Sumtory, and as you yeah. said, this is kind of their kind of their core range, their entry level. Hard. It, let's pump it out. And for something that is pumped out on such a mass basis, that's twenty one pounds in Morrison's right now. Yeah, I have nothing bad to say on it. Nope. Um, I don't want to wrap up too quickly, gents. But to be honest, I think we've said what we've got to say on these five drams. I, I think mean, we've hey, had quite a nice journey through the five drams. Yeah, absolutely. And I think you know we can do another Pete episode and really get stuck. And in, this is the know? thing, exactly that, guys. You guys have been asking us to do a dive into Pete and we wanted to just sort of get things going. This is an entry level journey into Pete where we think maybe you should start. Please drop in the comments what you would like to see for our deep dives into Pete. If there are any specific topics that you want us to focus on in Pete when it comes to different cuts or different locations or different phenolic compounds, we will get something in the runs for you as soon as possible. However, with that said, We've had five beautiful whiskeys here today. Should Just we do, do a, quick, a roundup? A buy, don't quick buy. Quick roundup. I think you can hold all the, uh, you know, notes and uh, all of that for Jan today. Okay. So. Uh, Highland Park 15. <laughs> Talk to me. Five. It's 100% a buy. Where are we at price point? Yeah. It's gone a little bit more expensive nowadays. It is up at about, I think, 80 pounds. It's, it's still a buy for me. It's still a buy. I knew it was going to be sub 100. And to me, again, it's not something that I'm going to buy loads of. But I think that exactly as you highlighted, it's a little bit more delicate than the 12. And so as an entry level starter, I think it's a really lovely place to start. Equally, and I know that you can't drink a bottle, but I love the bottle. I think it stands out. It's something a bit Can't different. buy that bottle anymore though. Sorry? I think they've stopped uh, bottling they stopped it in bottles? that bottle now. Ian, have they stopped those bottles? Uh, it's in a glass bottle now. Oh, uh, it, no. Not the... Yeah, they actually they, they they actually said it's more sustainable to go back to glass. They kind of they they did this for the right reasons and thought people would use it as candles and whatever. But then uh yeah, no, they no. said actually it's worse for the environment. Okay. It was costing them too much. So yeah. <laughs> okay, fair <laughs> enough. Well that's a shame because I like that bottle. I really do. It I does stand out. out. It's yeah. beautiful. But I would buy it still. Ian. Buy. It's a buy? Yeah. Stevie. Uh it's a don't buy. This is a don't buy. At 80 pounds? No, no. Too rich for your blood. Well, I'm just not a massive Highland Park fan, like, you know, so... Uh, no, listen, it's 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 lovely, I think, for an entry-level... Yeah. You'd maybe go to the 12, would you? The, well, I, I did start on the 12, and I've had the 15 many times, and it's lovely. But it's just don't buy. It's 80 quid. Fair enough. For a 15, you know. All right, I hear you. I hear you. All right, moving on. Springbank 10, for me, is an obvious buy. And if you can get it at RRP... How much is it, RRP? Yeah, I was just about to say, how much is the RRP? £55 pounds nowadays. RRP? Yeah. For me, I mean, that's verging on an oosh. As a, as a 10-year-old. Yep. It's a very, very strong buy. I don't want to get over overexcited about it. I'm going to get super strong buys on that one. The only thing that stops me buying more of it is other Springbanks. Right. right. So it's for sure. Yeah. And that's the thing. If you do visit and you go along and you get the hand fills or you get the, the specialist bottles, sometimes you can get it. I would agree. That's exactly very it. strong buy. Very, very, very great buys. point, actually, and very good point. Um, I'd still buy it. If I can get it, I'd, I'd buy it. Um, but you're right. You know, 
Um, spend a bit more money, like travel down to Campbelltown, indulge yeah, in the shop there. and really have a great experience. Andrew will sort you out. Yeah. The whole team will sort you out. They will. Absolutely. I think I, you know, I tend to buy myself like a couple of Kilcarran 8s or something, right? For sure. No, I hear you. I hear you. I hear you. But as an entry level point, if you can get your hand on the 10. Beautiful. It's a very, very strong buy. Moving on, the Talisker. We were looking at the 10. It is now over 50 pounds. We wanted to get something a bit more price accessible for you. <laughs> it's saying no to over 50 pounds for the 10. So we we went for the Sky. Look, in Tesco's, you can pick this up for 28 pounds if you've got a club card. Uh, and to be honest, I think for what it is and for this entry level episode, I'll give it a buy. I'm not super excited about it. There are some things that are missing from Talisker that I do love. However, I think it's, it's got its place in this lineup and I, I would give it a buy. Yeah, it's a no at 40 something, 20, 25 to 28 quid. Yeah, sneaks in. Sneaks, sneaks in, in, right? I think so. Why not? I go me in. Um, I, I actually know I wouldn't bother at all, but yeah. Sorry, which is it? <laughs> a bit I wouldn't, wouldn't bother buying it at all. No? No. No. I disagree with you, Jake. Okay. You're wrong. Okay, fair enough. <laughs> Listen, I think it's got its place, but let us know, guys, if you've bought a bottle of Talisker Sky. However, it is a great uh, entry to Talisker. That's, That's what, what we're saying. doing. No, but I don't care. I wouldn't mind anyway. Okay. <laughs> Throw away remarks from Stevie. I don't know where he stands. What are we doing here? <laughs> Kalila 12. Uh, we're looking at about 55 pounds. Yeah, not 80. <laughs> I genuinely, I uh, sorry, I've got that wrong. I got that very, very wrong. Jeez. But you can get it for 55 to 60 pounds now. 50, 50, sorry, 50 to 60 pounds, I think now. Uh, so 50 pounds, it's a buy from me. Um, again, not getting super excited about it, but that's probably because I'm used to buying it at 35. That's the pounds. thing. I'm just crying inside a lot yeah. about that current price. It's a don't buy for me. I just can't reconcile the amount that's gone up in the last few years. Yeah, no, I hear that. It's it's just a buy for me, but I appreciate the don't buy. It's good liquid. It is. I think is the key thing. Yeah, again, is. if you're looking to get into peat and experience those Isla flavors, mm. I think it's a good place to start. Mm. But would I be buying multiple bottles? Definitely not. Yep. Stevie? Well, Ian's the sort of person that gets upset that Frenos have gone up in price, right? Yeah. So everything's relative, Ian. So new people in this category, look, 50, 55 quid, it's, it's a lot of money on a bottle when you're new to whiskey. However, the liquid is strong, you know, and it's a great um, entry into Pete and to the Siri. So, you know what? It's 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 a buy from me, you know? Yeah, it really is, yeah. gets through. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. And finally, Ardmore, I think probably the winner today from a price point of view, yeah. at £21, that is phenomenal value. I'm giving it really, really strong buys at that price. I think it's a very rich, very uh, sort of heavy peat for an entry-level drinker. Uh, so do proceed with caution. Again, the whole point of this episode is to welcome new drinkers into the category of peat and get them excited about it. So if you're not looking for that super rich, super earthy style of peat, maybe start with the Highland Park. Uh, but if you're excited to level up from the Highland Park or the Springbank or the Talisker or even the Kalila, I think this is a great place to go. And for £21, I don't think you can go far wrong even if you don't like it. So it's a heavy buy from me. Get to. £21 is amazing value. I think for me, I've had enough other like good and especially indie Ardmore that yeah. I'm not personally going to buy a bottle because I never need... Right. A bottle. No, I hear that. But if you're looking to start your peat journey, it's a very strong buy. Yeah, definitely. No, I, it's, that's exactly how I feel. Yeah, look, I've got loads of Ardmore in IBs. Too much of it. I love it. I think it's a great brand. Um, so you're right. I probably wouldn't run out and buy a bottle myself, but I think for the purpose of this episode, it is a strong buy uh, and it's great value for money. Stevie? Not much more to say. I completely agree with you guys. £21. I mean, you spend more on a takeaway pizza, right? Right. If you're new to whiskey, yep. you want to try a bit of pee and, and, and get something that's actually fairly decent for 21 pounds. The fact that it's not aged staple as well, I, I think, you know, again, like we've got a 15-year-old, a 10-year-old, a 12-year-old here. This stands up. And, and two non-aged statements. I think this is definitely the better of the non-aged statements. I think it's yep. a really well-balanced liquid. And I think that it shows off the Ardmore characteristics that you would look for. Whereas, like I said, with the Talisker, it's just lacking a little bit in some of those areas. But this is an Ardmore through and through. It's a strong, strong buy from all of us. Uh, so if you're new into Pete, hopefully this has been a wonderful episode episode. Who is Peter? What does he do? Well, this is what he does. Uh, he adds a whole lot of character and a whole lot of flavor to all these different whiskeys. Please do drop a like and a subscribe if you haven't already. Uh, and we will see you for our next episode and for future episodes. 
diving into Pete, please do let us know what you'd like to see. But for now, that's all from us. Slash Cheers. Cheers.